guys little update i finally finished reading providence <laughs> and i say finally because i am getting antsy to read through the rest of my fall tbr i have four books left so i've just been like i need to get these done like i need to read through them i finished providence just now i had like 30 pages left of it yesterday but I didn't have any time to read yesterday, so I was able to finish this one after work today. And honestly, I'm still kind of conflicted because I don't know how I feel about this one, I guess. Like, I think it was a pretty average read. And honestly, I do like Caroline Kepnes's or Carolyn. I'm not sure how you say her name. I just keep saying Caroline, but... I do really like her writing because I feel like you get the inner monologue of the character. Like I feel like she doesn't really describe setting other than what the character is seeing and you don't really get like the full story of what's going on or the plot or the events. It's like you really are in the character's head and you're hearing all their thoughts and what they are thinking about what is going on around them. And that is really interesting to me. I think it's a really interesting way of writing because you really are in the story. Like that is part of why I like her writing is I feel like I'm invested with what's going on. But also the fact that I'm living in the character's head, I'm getting all the information. So nothing is really a secret other than if it happens in the moment and then it's like what just happened so <laughs> i did feel that a lot in this one i did like her writing style and honestly i feel like this one started out strong but then i kind of felt like it just went on for too long it's about like it's almost a 400 page book and i don't think it needs to be that long i think the plot just gets stretched thin there's a lot of time jumps and I don't know, I think I would overall give this one three stars just because I did really like the characters. Like I said, it really started out strong. I liked the beginning when the kid, like John, was kidnapped and he was missing and everyone was looking for him and I think that was the strongest part of the book because then it just kind of like carried on for too long with all the time jumps and everything else happening. Overall, I liked the characters a lot. The main character, John, is a sweetheart, so you feel really sad about like what's happening to him. And then Chloe, the love interest and the main female in the book, I really liked her a lot too. She was very complex, and I feel like we just get a lot of the inner workings of her brain but we also get like what people think of her and so that was really interesting to me because she's this artist who is going through the motions of her feelings by painting and yet everyone just thinks she's full of herself and she's like this big deal painter but we know like what she's actually going through so it's like no that's not who Chloe is at all but anyway Suffice it to say, I did like this one. It wasn't really a thriller. It wasn't like a spooky read like I was expecting. There was kind of a twist with what happened to John, what was going on, but you also know it the whole time, so it's not like a surprise or a shocker, but there is just a twist. Like, it's not a realistic book, I guess. And if you're a Lovecraft fan, like the author Lovecraft, um he is mentioned in this book a lot his writings are mentioned there's like a whole hp lovecraft convention that's a big main event in the book so i would recommend if you like lovecraft i don't know but <laughs> overall i think it's a three star read and i am really excited to get into the rest of my fall tbr because i am just very excited for the rest of the thrillers that i have on my list and i just really want to get it done so <laughs> that being said i need to figure out my next read i have these three on my bookshelf and then i also have my last one on my ipad and i was looking at these earlier and part of me is like the girl on the train i already started reading and i didn't like it so part of me is like just try to read it get through it like be done with it but then i'm also like i don't really feel like reading that one and then i also have follow me back and the last thing he told me which follow me back i think is a ya book like look at this font it is like super big so I'm like, I would probably read this one fast. So do I read this one next or do I read this one? Because I'm intrigued about the storyline in this one. But I don't know yet. Honestly, 
and then go read this one next. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta decide. I gotta make a decision. But I have a couple things that I need to get done this afternoon, so I'm not sure when I'll have time to read this. It's kind of a busy weekend. And then next weekend, hopefully I'll have some reading time with being less busy, but we shall see. So it's a little bit later today, but I started reading this, Follow Me Back, and I realized it's a Wattpad story. So if you were one of the girlies that was on Wattpad, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But it was basically, if you're not familiar, an app or website that had all these different stories on it. So like anyone could upload a story. I'm pretty sure I even have some writing on there, which is probably so cringy because I was like in middle school and like the beginning of high school when I had Wattpad. Anyway, so this started as a Wattpad story and then it blew up and obviously it's a published book now. But the synopsis is basically there's a celebrity named Eric Thorne and then there's this girl named Tessa that's like a big fan of him and they start messaging each other over Twitter and then like I am or whatever. But then there was another celebrity who was murdered by a girl after he followed her on social media. She was so obsessed with him that she ended up murdering him. So. That just made this book a lot more interesting because I forgot what it was about, but now I'm like, okay. And it opens up with like a police interview. So the very first, like the prologue is an interview with the celebrity and the police. So I don't really know what this book entails, but I kind of feel like I'll read through it fast because the font is so big and it also seems like a really compelling plot. So we shall see. It's like chilly and it's raining and I also turned this on so that way I just have a cute little cozy setup hi friends it is the next day it is so rainy and dark and windy outside right now it is again the perfect fall day right now it's like 6 20 p.m I think it's like later and I had a very busy day but now that I'm home, I think I'm gonna shower and honestly just read until I'm hungry for dinner because I really wanna get a lot of reading done. My TBR is like hanging over my head and I just like want to make a good dent in reading. So I am feeling very inspired to read, but I feel like whenever I'm reading, it's like after I showered and so I always look the same. So I wanted to throw this clip in here so that way I'm not just going to be wearing glasses with my hair braided because that's how I always look. Okay, it is 6.23 and I finished it! Finally! I mean, not really finally. I literally started it Friday. But it actually ended with a cliffhanger. It was, I mean... It was pretty good for a YA thriller. I feel like there were some parts that were a little too immature for me where I was just like, this is cringy. Like some of the jokes and things, I was like, this is not funny. Like I think a younger YA audience would really appreciate it, but I'm a little too old to appreciate the humor in the book. But then the end, so the very last chapter is like a huge plot twist. And I was like, no way. And I found out there's a second book, which I had no idea. I thought this was a standalone, but apparently it's a duology. So it ends with a cliffhanger. And I was like, what? I was floored. And I was about to make a review, like say my thoughts for the vlog. But then I was like, I, need, I just need to know what's going on. And that's when I found out that there's a second book and that the story continues. And I do not want to read the second book because this one was not good enough to where I want to hunt down the second book and read it. So I just looked up the spoilers and I feel better now because I kind of figured like the plot, the way that this one ends, I kind of assumed why it ended that way. And I was like, there's no way, like this is why that's the ending. And I was right. And so I found like what happens in the second book and I was like, okay, yeah, don't really need to read that. So I mean, overall, I think I'm like in between giving this one two or three stars because I did want to know what was going on and it was intriguing and obviously I read it really fast. So I feel like I would give it like a 2.5 
Um, yeah, definitely not my favorite, but I got it done. So that's another book off of the fall TBR. Now I have three left. And I'm kind of like, do I force myself to read Girl on the Train? Do I read The Last Thing He Told Me? Or do I read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell? I feel very conflicted. I don't want to read Girl on the Train because I started it and I didn't like it. So now I don't want to read it. But I'm like, do I try it and just try to get through it or what? <sighs> so I don't know. I think I'll read the last thing he told me because I don't feel like reading the girl on the train yet. <laughs> Okay friends, update because it has been a while since I've updated you guys and I've read two books since I last updated you. So as you know, I decided to read The Last Thing He Told Me. Honestly, I thought this one was going to be more of a thriller and it was more of a mystery with like a found family element. So I still liked this one. I thought the writing was really good and I was pretty much enthralled the whole time. Like I did want to know what was happening next. But it wasn't one of my favorites, and I think because I was expecting it to be a thriller, I was a little put off by the fact that the storyline was a lot more simple than what I thought it was going to be. So overall, I give this one like three and a half stars. I was really in between three and a half or four because I did really like it, and the last line of this book is everything. And... I really liked the main character, Hannah. Honestly, she's one of my favorite characters I think that I've ever read because she's so smart and intuitive and I really liked that. And I did like the story of her and her husband, Owen. I was pretty sad. Like the whole plot of this book is that her husband goes missing and he leaves her a note. And so her husband isn't part of this book other than in flashbacks. And that made me really sad because the way that she describes him and talks about him and like the way that things happen, I was like, <sighs> it just made me sad. So I would recommend this one, but don't go for it if you want a thriller because this one is more of a simple mystery than a thriller. So nothing like too crazy happened. I mean, it's still pretty crazy, but yeah. And it's a TV show with Jennifer Gardner. So if you want to read the book before watching the show, I would recommend. And that means that I have read 8 out of 10 for my fall TBR. So I have two left. I have Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and then The Girl on the Train, which honestly, I think I'll read this one next because it's my next hardcover one or like my next physical book. Then She Was Gone is on my iPad slash Kindle app. So I will probably read this one next. Okay, I'm now starting The Girl on the Train. I'm not excited for this one, so I honestly don't feel like reading. And also, I just don't like the size of this book. Like, I don't know why I bought this book in the first place. But, yeah, I am not super excited to read it because I already started it and it was really boring. So, <laughs> I haven't started it yet, but I'm finally going to start it today. I, like took a break from my October TBR to read Divine Rivals so I think I'm also just in a book slump like after reading that it's like how can I read anything else I just want to read that over and over again but this is my next read <laughs> maybe it'll shock me I don't know maybe it'll be really good but I'm gonna try to start this today okay friends the girl on the train so I finished it I'm honestly excited to be done with it I think it was definitely a lot better than the first time that I read it because the first time I just thought it was so boring that I did not finish it and I just left it on my bookshelf for the future. But this time, honestly, it was a lot more intriguing, a lot more interesting. I think because I'm older, I just thought it was less boring because it basically is this woman who takes the train every day and as she takes the train she sees this couple and she kind of imagines this life for them and then the woman goes missing from the couple and so the main character Rachel in this one is trying to figure out what happened to the woman like she basically gets herself involved but the only issue that I had with this one which isn't really an issue because it's part of the plot for the thriller mystery suspense 
is that Rachel is an alcoholic so basically this book would have been done in five pages if she wasn't drunk and she just remembered what happened to her but alas we have this whole book because she is an alcoholic which is part of her character problem so she doesn't remember what happened to her she's trying to piece together this mystery piece together her past and she can't really figure it out and then the end honestly was a plot twist but i saw it coming from the very beginning so it was pretty clever and i did like how the author tied together all these women i thought that was really interesting because you have rachel the main character then the woman that rachel's husband has an affair with and then the woman that's missing from the house and all together they come together in a pretty crazy way and i was expecting it but i really did like how the author tied it all together so it was a good ending. I finished it, which makes me really happy because I can finally get rid of this book. <laughs> it wasn't good enough that I think I want to read it again, even though it was clever, but it was mostly I just wanted to know what was going to happen, and I was right about what was going to happen. So I think overall I would give this one three stars. The writing is pretty clever. It does read pretty fast. But I'm very happy to be done with it. And so now I just have my last book on my TBR, Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I've heard that it's pretty dark. But I'm excited to read it and then be done with my October TBR. But then I started Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. And honestly, this one also was not that surprising to me like a lot of people talk about the plot twist in this one so i was expecting something a little bit more than what i got like i don't know if the synopsis gives this one away too much or if like the beginning of the book gives it away too much but i was definitely not shocked by the plot twist and i was bummed by that because everyone talks about how good the plot twist is in this book and i was like i don't even feel like i had a plot twist so I did like this one. I'd probably give it four stars, but the only thing is that it was really dark. It was a good thriller, but it was just kind of dark for me because there's um, a kidnapping. Like the whole plot is about a kidnapping of this girl named Ellie. And I just don't like that. It's too realistic and just too sad for me. So this one did make me feel icky. Like part of me was like, I can't wait until I'm done with this book. I almost didn't want to finish it when I was halfway through because it just made me so sad and it was so sick and twisted in the middle. But I did. I finished it and I'm glad that I did because it did end well. And I do like Lisa Jewell's writing style. Like she definitely captures you in and you want to know the ending and you just want to keep reading. So I would recommend it, but honestly, it was a good one to end for my October thriller reads. I was going to say rides for my October thriller reads. But it was just a really sad, dark book. So I will warn you, if you want to read this one, look up trigger warnings. Make sure that you're well prepared going in this one. But it was a dark one. Overall, though, probably four stars. It was a good read. And that wraps up my October TBR, which is so crazy. I've been reading these 10 books since September to now, and I honestly can't believe how much I've read. My Goodreads goal for this year was to get, I think, 70 books, and I am now at 104, which is crazy. Like, that is so crazy to me. So, with that being said, I read my October TBR. I'm feeling pretty proud and excited about that. So, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more of my reads coming up. I have a really exciting one up next. So, keep an eye out for that. Bye, guys!